So this is the third video. We're going to walk you through the Q&A modeling now. Ms. Naidu is a teacher. She's going to ask me questions. I will do my best to answer. The whole point of the question and answer is to make sure that the child is developing their ideas and developing their understanding of the global issue. At no point should we be trying to trick or trap them in their responses. Yeah, and there's four main areas of the oral, so it makes sense to ask a question about each area. So question number one, ideally, should be about the literary extract. Question two, about the literary body of work. Question three, about the non-literary extract. And finally, question four, on the non-literary body of work. Yeah, this is an easy way to keep the questions on track and focused on the assessment criteria, and that's what we model here. Okay, let's watch. Thank you, Adam. Let's go to the literary work, which is your poem, Dream Deferred. Please tell me, what does the poet mean in line seven when he says, crust and sugar over? Okay, that is a continuation of the similes throughout the poem. And the, the similes that I highlighted were focused upon unpleasant um, sensations, uh, feelings with negative connotations. Crust and sugar over could be possibly alluding to rewards, maybe of acceptance, such as uh, in Gandhi, the, 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 su the successful businessman who has the rewards. Uh, but it could also be kind of the, the leftovers of a, of a sweet that is kind of crusted and, and is not, it's not the best part, but it's something, like it's, it's some sort of tangible, something you could latch onto, but it's not as great as having your full dream. In Hugh's body of work, his poems tend to grow darker. Um, how do you think he uses narrative voices to show your global issue? In my global issue, one narrative voice that really comes to mind is Let America Be America Again. In that poem, uh, there is a speaker who is uh, speaking as if he is patriotic, but it becomes clear that there is a division and there's two speakers within the poem saying America never was America to me. So that's a really strong point about identity and what do we think of it to be an American, to have freedom. Is, is that everyone's experience as American? And uh, Hughes answers no in that poem and that for him being American has not been a moment of freedom or a, or a lifetime of freedom. But he encourages all to continue seeking for freedom, striving for freedom. And that's why at the end of the poem he says, the America she can become and will be. If we move now to our non-literary text, mm -hmm. uh, I notice there's quite a lot of uh, racial slurs here. Mm -hmm. Can you pick some of those up and tell me what impact that would have in an audience? Yes, well, uh, no colored attorneys, he calls him a kaffir, a bloody kaffir, I believe. Uh, and then I already referred to uh, black ass in, in earlier in my analysis. So these casual racist terms are shocking in the modern audience. Uh, and I believe they create in the modern audience a feeling of sympathy for Gandhi. Mm -hmm. And uh, I also believe it's a sign of great progress in the world that uh, generally these, this sort of open racism is no longer to tolerated in many contexts. I think it would be a uh, cause for someone to be shunned if they were openly racist in this way. Uh, but the effect in the movie is that uh, it immediately puts the audience uh, sympathizing with Gandhi and wanting to uh, join his cause for justice. Mm -hmm. And do you think Attenborough does a good job in his body of work, the way he characterizes Gandhi? Yes, yes, yes I think so. Uh, uh, very good. Um, Gandhi's courage is often displayed. I can think of his confidence when later when Gandhi returns to India, he's in a courtroom and uh, he's defying the order of a judge. And the judge says, uh, do you want to go to jail? And Gandhi says to the judge, as you wish. And uh, he's just showing that he is willing to stand up and suffer any consequences, that the consequences are insignificant to him. And again, that inspires an audience to um, continue to question their own role within society, and to use Gandhi as an exemplar. Thank you, Adam. And finally, is there anything else you would like to add on to this 
global issue of racism and identity? I think there's one other part in the body of work um, with Gandhi that really inspired me, which is the uh, Amritsar massacre. Um, this is Gandhi's influence throughout the country. During that scene, Indians were peacefully protesting the uh, British control of India, and the British decided to make an example and brought in uh, several armed soldiers and ended up killing the peaceful protesters, many, many, many of them. And that was a real tipping point in the Indian freedom movement, but the way it is graphically shown in the movie with babies crying in their mother's arms as they're dying, and people running around chaotically, jumping into wells to try to escape the bullets, as innocent protesters simply speaking up for their right to uh, independence and dreams, uh, it really brings the audience to feeling keenly the injustice in the world and to wanting to stand up and speak for and make the world a better and more just place. Thank you. Adam. So each of these questions have allowed you to go deeper, showing your understanding of this global issue um, and your understanding of the body of work. Right, and uh, they don't push into other topics. Um, I think teachers should avoid asking topics about related uh, current events or the student's personal life or how these things uh, connect because really what's being assessed is the extracts and the bodies of work. Mm, absolutely correct. The focus should be primarily on that literary extract, the non-literary extract, and both bodies of work. That is what is being evaluated. Great, yeah. Thanks for that. And uh, there's links to down below to every part of the orals to walk you through it step by step. And of course, you can also watch this entire video uh, the 15 minutes from start to finish instead of broken up into three different sections. Thank you, Ms. Naidu. Thank you, Mr. Crasley. And good luck to all of you in your oral.